It's time now for the news review of this bulletin. British lawmaker Nigel Adams has stepped down as a member of parliament, becoming the third Tory MP to resign in 24 hours. Adams announced on Twitter that he will be standing down with immediate effect following the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson's resignation a day earlier. On Friday, another member of the Conservative Party stepped down as an MP. The resignations have set off by elections for the constituencies in West London. Johnson stepped down amid a parliamentary investigation into the lockdown breaking parties when he was the Prime Minister. The probe has been launched to find out whether the then Premier lied to the House of Commons over the parties during the pandemic. Johnson says that there is no evidence for his misconduct. The quittings have reopened deep divisions among Tories ahead of the general election. London, from London, Amina Taylor, our correspondent, joins us. Also, uh, we have John Ross, senior fellow at the Chang Yang Institute at Renmin University of China, joining us from Beijing. Welcome to you both. Uh, let me start with you, Amina. Tell us more about the most recent resignation, how many in total, and what impact this is having on uh, the Tories in general, and of course, uh, regarding the upcoming elections. Of course, I mean, those viewers who are watching us internationally must be wondering when will this third rate political soap opera kind of see a logical conclusion? Because what we're having here is a former prime minister who is, in essence, throwing his toys out of the pram. We have a man here who <laughs> one of his uh, political adversaries said if he opens his mouth, it's probably followed by a lie, which gives some indication as to the kind of reputation Boris Johnson has in certain parts of the, uh, the political sphere here. Now, Nigel Adams, not much in terms of a political pedigree. He was minister without portfolio. The people of Selby, who he's represented since 2010, might not miss him terribly because they have a 7,000 majority here. So the by-election that will be triggered by his resignation it will undoubtedly return another conservative or a conservative light. It will, however, be a real itch in the, in the trousers of Richie Sunak here because Boris Johnson is the pest he can't get rid of. Now, remember, they locked horns during the time when the prime minister was, in fact, the finance minister, and it was his resignation that sparked Boris Johnson's downfall, essentially. As soon as Richie Sunak made it clear that he could no longer support the prime minister, scores of other resignations followed. If perhaps Boris Johnson thought the same would happen here when Nadine Doris, the former culture secretary, followed him into the great British political unknown, it hasn't quite had that domino effect yet. Because it's one thing we do know about conservatives over here is that self-interest is paramount. Boris Johnson is doing this for Boris Johnson. He couldn't care less about his constituents in West London's Uxbridge. He couldn't care less about the British people. It's about furthering his own aims. And I think we will see any political maneuvers from the former prime minister follow that trajectory through. Unfortunately, he's predictable in being unpredictable. <laughs> Well, John Ross, what do you think? Uh, how does this reflect on the Tories in terms of what has happened? Well, it's, they're, they're in a total mess and they're heading for an electoral defeat. So various people are jumping before they're pushed. Um, that's the first thing. And second, as regards to Boris Johnson, that applies to Boris Johnson. He probably might well have lost his seat at the general election. And it, it's a consequence of two things. One is uh, the, the general economic situation in Britain is terrible. The, um, according to the International Labour Organization, real wages haven't gone up in the last 17 years, if you can imagine such a situation. Um, and then the, the tremendous infighting that started in the Tory party, because Brexit, of course, was a whole um, load of um, claim, claims that were never going to be realised, and that unleashed chaos. And if you put these two together, then you have the present mess. I mean, when you uh, take a look at uh, reactions uh, on the streets, if you have had a chance to speak to anybody or uh, uh, in one way or another uh, felt what has occurred, what, what do people think about what it was, what's happening right now? Of course, in particular, the ones who are a supporter of the Tory party in general. 
Of course, and it's a mix back here. Let's be let's be honest about something, Kave. One thing that Boris Johnson has that a lot of his even political detractors would sell their mothers for is that name recognition. He is known. He is known conveniently and uh, jovially as Boris. He can bluff and piffle his way through political conversations. He has the gift of the gab, no doubt. He can turn his hand to a really well-written sentence. He knows to see which way the wind is blowing and get ahead of it. Now, something your um, uh, my colleague just mentioned there that I'd like to expound on a little bit. The Tories recognize that things may well be looking grim for them come the next general election. So people are trying their very best to secure their own personal positions. What do I do after this? How do I secure the bag? How do I ensure that I get a jump to sell my side of history in this? This is what Boris Johnson is trying to do. Anyone without a full full grasp of the, the Commons Privileges Committee might miss the fact that it's predominantly uh, um, stuffed with Conservative members. And if these very individuals are looking at the conduct of the Prime Minister during COVID and saying there might be a case to answer here, why would he not defend that? Why would he not stand up in front of his colleagues in Parliament and give his side of the story? It's because he recognized that he probably wouldn't come off the victor there. So the best thing to do before there's any embarrassment is, as my colleague mentioned, jump before you're pushed. And I think people are getting a little bit sick of that. <clears throat> this political convolution and the soap opera is doing very little to mask the fact that so many of us will be looking at our, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, uh, cold here, looking at our paychecks and recognizing that we can't buy the same things that we used to buy last year or the year before that. Things are grim and there's a lot of let's try and get people to look away from the real stories if we can just focus on this opera and it's not working as it would have. All right, uh, and last question, uh, John Ross. Uh, and not surprisingly, you have uh, uh, the um, Labour, uh, Keir Starmer, who has asked for snap elections um, f because of what has happened. Do you think that that is a viable route to go at this point? The Tory party knows that if there was an election now, it'd be a massacre of uh, them. Therefore, what they want to do, they'll hang on to the last moment and hope something will turn up. You never know, they might be able to stage a war or something of that type um, to divert attention from the situation. So there's no possibility of a, uh, a short-term election at all. They'll just hang it out and hope that something is um, going to happen. But they're, they're in a total terrible mess, as, as all the goings on with Johnson indicate. All right, thank you very much for that. John Ross, a senior fellow at the Chongyang Institute, uh, Renmin University of China, and uh, Mina Taylor, pleasure to see you. Correspondent there from London. With that, we come to an end for this edition of the News Review. Thanks for tuning in.